All right, my friends, here you go. A highly requested video from my Capo Ace One running video and unboxing. Uh, the, the comments were coming in asking me to put my uh, Axial Wraith, it is modified, the Black Widow here in the middle, uh, beside an Axial Bomber, which of course is now beside the Capo Ace One so you guys could see a size comparison. Look at that, I tried to line the wheels up as best I could so you can see that the wheelbase of the Capo Ace One is much longer. And you can also see in the front that the uh, it's a little bit wider. Now it's not really fair to say because these are monster tires I have on here. I believe they're IMAX tires and they're mounted on Vanquish axles. Now this Black Widow was designed by my buddy and his dad, uh, the Daves I'll call them. David Jr. is out, actually out touring parts of the world right now. He's been becoming a man and I think it's amazing what he's doing right now. So shout out to David Jr. Uh, he turned 18 this year and, and uh, he's a heck of an RC fabricator and this was just one of the pieces that I got privileged enough to work on it with him. Now on this side, dun, 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 my Axial Bomber. I'd like to say this: all three of these trucks are classified as a one-tenth scale. Uh, so on the box of the Capo Ace One that I got pre-released, it was a gift to me when I was in Hong Kong uh, at the Recon G6. I did film a lot of that for you guys if you want to check it out on the channel. Uh, Pre-released, I got one of the very first ones. In fact, I worked with them in the beginning uh, when they were telling me about it and I got to be Team Driver 101. I got to choose my number, which was very cool. Very good luck with that number. Here we are with the Axial Bomber, as I was saying. Super cool. My aluminum uh, side panels, I actually bought these on eBay. It cost me $75, I believe. I think that was a US price, and I didn't know, but it was actually DC, uh, the company where we just went uh, and showed you how they make aluminum tires, and I also did ba -bong, this truck right here, which is my Komodo. Uh, these rims come from DC. Well, I bought these plates, had no idea on eBay, because it was just being sold by you know like a random name uh, and it, they, they, they came so that was cool to find out not too much modified on this one except a nice big motor and ESC combo brushless uh, castle system in here the only thing I did was add these super wide tires upgrade to a waterproof servo and put a couple of one too many RC light buckets on there don't know if he offers these anymore but uh, always good to keep a lookout on his site for new stuff uh, so here we go. Uh, with these tires, it gave me a nice wide stance. I always like that. Being Proline mashers, they've got some pretty good stickiness to them, but I'll tell you that the, the grip from the cut and the siping really does help in the wintertime driving. Nice and wide. Same with the Black Widow. Uh, these are custom aluminum uh, body plates that David had made, David Jr. Same with the bumper, Black Widow being, of course, these eyes lit up and we've got a couple of red lights on the inside there. The Vanquish uh, setup uh, on the old uh, Wraith uh, axles that they have and, of course, a custom steering servo uh, mount to get that steering arm out of the way. Overall, this thing is pretty darn heavy. I can't really tell you how much, but definitely close to 10 pounds, if not a bit over. My bomber right here, very light on the opposite. Really good for U4. This one is really good for hill climbing. And of course, coming down to the Capo Ace One. Let's talk about this truck for a little bit, guys, because I know that it, I am lucky to get one. I'm very humble uh, and happy uh, to show this off. I was not paid or anything like that to do any of these trucks, uh, but I wanted to get it out and take it out on the rocks, even though it was brand new. And uh, even though I got some rock rash on it, it was worth it because you guys really enjoyed the video. And you left a lot of light clicks in that video, so I really do appreciate you guys taking time to actually show me you're there. Empty views are great, but it's better when I know you're there. These tires were commented on. Now look how wide this axle is. Quite wide compared to this one. Yeah. Wide and longer. When I take this out, you know, I, there's a few things I have to remember. Number one, it's a hard body that actually is very, very del delicate, I will say. If it's open, you know, you could run the chance of breaking this off. Now, is it like this one? A little bit, except we changed the design on this and that it actually, let me just undo this here. 
it flips up like this. Could this still come off? Absolutely. But you know, this is nice detail screwed in properly on springs. You know, what am I going to say about this? Everybody expects their crawlers to be absolutely amazing and do everything, but you really have to drive within the limitations of your vehicle. Uh, or, you know, you could suffer consequences much like I did. I shouldn't have rolled it over on the rocks, but I did. I was excited. I wanted to go out and that's what happens in the hobby. You know, it doesn't matter if it's full scale uh, or, or, or tent scale, right? Because we all go out there and we go hard when we want uh, to do something awesome. Now, let's talk about damage. So I'll, I'll get to damage in a second. I was talking about the tires. Number one, the tires were in the cold and it was the very first time I was running these tires. Out of all the tires I've had, and I've had a lot of tires, these are actually really, really good. I think they're going to be very popular uh, because of the ridge line. And yes, they are a little on the front side they weren't super sticky out of the box I agree but when I was out doing the running video it was very cold outside they had snow on the ground and a firm tire is going to be made out of anything even these very thin walled tires get very very firm in the cold especially when we're dealing with uh, snow and ice now these I think these tires are actually going to be great for hill climbing and or pulling uh, the reason why I say that is because uh, with those hard ridges in the mud, it's going to have plenty of grip. Now, <laughs> what makes it different from my other rigs? It's not really fair doing a comparison uh, because one of the things that you guys may notice is that these are highly modified and this is what you get in the kit. Well, here, let me click it down there. This is what you get in the kit, except for the winch. You do not get the winch in the kit. Everything else other than the drivers I put in that wasn't in the unboxing video uh, comes, you know, with it. So it's really neat. It does have a, what I would call a three-stage transmission, really only uh, first gear and second gear, but it does have a neutral setting where if you're winching, you can just freewheel out of there. One of the things uh, that makes this really unique is the hydrostatic steering setup. Now it's not actually hydrostatic it is cable driven and people had mentioned to me do you think that these you know end uh, this is where the cables for the steering there's cables that run under this for people that didn't see the unboxing video cables here goes up to a servo underneath the front seat which you guys can't really see right there there it is and this servo dial uh, adds pressure and takes pressure away. <laughs> Which is an amazing, innovative concept. I'm so happy to see something other than the, the big steering bars up front. Now, I'm not just saying that it's on these products. I have it on, you know, any brand. That's the conventional steering way. Now, folks were saying when you get on the rocks, you know, is it going to get caught you know, hung up, stretch, break it off? And the answer is sure, that could definitely happen. If you're not paying attention, which was me, except I was filming and I did see it get hung up on the rock. In fact, I addressed it in the video itself. Um, you know, it, I would like to see some sort of slider protector here, like just a small plate that could attach or maybe even some, uh, you know, Delrin that just slides over here. They could do a longer plate under here, but none of us really want this big sliding plate. And who knows, they may even have a new design concept coming down the road. That's what's cool about Capo. They always have innovative things that are going on. Yes, they're incredibly expensive. Normally they're expensive. I've heard this one here, uh, when I was at the Recon G6, it was mentioned to me by Capo, this is gonna be less than a thousand USD for the kit. Does that come with electronics? No. Does it come with the battery? No, but neither did any of my stuff really, you know, unless it's a Traxxas product and some of them come with batteries. Overall, did I have any damage uh, from the running video? Yes, I did. Check it out, this very thin plastic brace right here, which seems to be one of the only thin pieces of plastic here, because this is all solid. This was broken. Same with when I fell over on the rocks and I hit my uh, hood more than once and I cracked somewhere in here. Somewhere down, I believe it is in here, and that was unfortunate because this little latch needs to attach to the hood, which is again a great concept. But if the latch comes undone and you take a tumble, you can really, you know, do the damage there. So, got to be careful with that. 
This does have a lot of aluminum on it, my friends. Uh, the whole gearing system is completely unique to Capo. Uh, there is an exploded view on Capo France Racing, I think. You gotta check that out. If, even if you just YouTube uh, Capo Racing right now, you'll find an Ace One exploded view of the gears and of course the gnarly transmission on the inside. Right on. Okay, so there you go, my friends. There is the three uh, amigos. <laughs> the three amigos. Uh, I know I could compare it with some other trucks, but just to let you know, uh, this was the requested video was to throw it up against these two trucks. Maybe I'll do another one in the future if you like it. If you do, please smash the like button. Leave a comment, and I'll see you in the next episode of RC Adventures. Now get outside and have some fun with RC. Bye.